That's the relationship and that's the foundation of our request. This is so important that I'll bring it back to the court's attention and the court knows this, that even the sitting DA, the elected DA, decided to weigh in on this issue of the relationship between the proctors and the McCabe's and or the Alberts. And he said there's no such relationship, zero. This doesn't exist. As a matter of fact, the word that he used was it's a lie. Any suggestion to the contrary that there's any kind of relationship between the Proctors and the McCabe's or the Proctors and the Alberts is a lie. His words. So the DA himself has put Trooper Proctor's neutrality at issue and he did it in the most public way possible and I would suggest a clumsy way. Who was he talking to? He didn't come into this courthouse and address the court as we've all done. He didn't address the court, he didn't address the Commonwealth, he didn't address, he is the Commonwealth, he didn't address us, the defense. What he did do is he addressed the public and the potential jurors. And that was by design. Has been suggested, Proctor would have no motive to do so. Trooper Proctor had no close personal relationship with any of the parties involved in the investigation and had no conflict. And he had no reason to step out of this investigation. Every suggestion to the contrary is a lie. This should be seen for what it is and not used as a pretext to attack and harass others. What is happening to the witnesses, some with no actual involvement in the case, is wrong. It is contrary to the American values of fairness and the constitutional value of a fair trial. It needs to stop now. He calls the evidence that we've procured and that we've presented to the court as lies. Well, let's look at those lies for a quick second. We have presented the court with photographic evidence not something that we came up with, something they came up with. Photographs in Exhibit C in our moving papers. And I'll just cover a couple of those. There's a photograph that we presented that shows Trooper Proctor's mother, the person by the name of Colin Albert, pictured in the photograph, with Trooper Proctor's sister pictured in the photograph, with Chris Albert pictured in the photograph, and with Jennifer McCabe's own daughter, depicted in the photograph. They're all together at a birthday party. These are close and immediate family members of the Proctor family, the Albert family, and the McCabe family, and they're all together and they're socializing. That's not a lie, it's a photograph. And it's unassailable evidence of that relationship. There's a second photograph of Trooper Proctor and Colin Albert in a wedding party together. And I, I would urge the court to note, they're not at a wedding together, they're in a wedding together, in the wedding party. There's a third photograph. And Trooper when Proctor. was that? When was that? When was that? 2012. So this relationship, as the court just noted, and I was about to get to in a second, is not just days old, months old, weeks old. This relationship is decades old between these families. There's another photograph that the court has seen, Trooper Proctor, literally on the dance floor with Colin Albert. So when counsel for Elizabeth Proctor suggests, oh no, these relationships, you can't believe any of this stuff, just because someone happens to be at the same event does not thereby establish a relationship. They weren't just at the same event. They're in a wedding party together. They're standing on the dance floor, side by side, shoulder to shoulder, Trooper Proctor and Colin Albert. And then we see a photograph of all of them seated at the same dining room table. They shared a meal together. This is socializing. These are interpersonal relationships and they can't change that. Trooper Proctor was seated at the same table, having dinner with Colin Albert, Chris Albert and Chris Albert's wife, Julie. Then there's the Facebook post, and I will leave it at this. I'm not going to go through the entirety of my motion, uh, but I would highlight the last point that I think should be highlighted for the court's attention, and that's the Facebook post. Trooper Proctor's mother refers to the Albert family as the Proctor's second family. So one might actually ask, Mr. Morrissey, who's actually lying in this case? Is it us? We just presented the court with factual information that was procured off of social media that can't, it's unassailable. It cannot be assailed. And the, the proctors have known these people for, as the court just mentioned, uh, by asking for that date, for more than a decade. They've socialized with him and his family considers their family to be so close and interconnected that they are deemed a second family to the proctors. But here's what 
the Commonwealth has said, even though they haven't made that connection or that concession. On October 3rd, 2022, Mr. Lally made uh, a couple of points, uh, eloquent points in this courtroom. And what he was doing when he did it in October was illustrating what an inappropriate relationship would look like if one existed. What a conflict of interest would look like if one existed. And he said, quote, Michael Proctor has been fully vetted, end quote. He said, there's no conflict of interest here because it's not like, quote, these people are socializing together, end quote. He said, it's not like, quote, these people know each other, end quote. And he went on to say, it's not like, quote, these people are, these are people that Trooper Proctor has been over to their home, end quote. The Commonwealth said that because these facts would surely illustrate a conflict of interest. They would surely illustrate an undeniable bias. And those comments, Your Honor, I would suggest have not aged well. When Michael Morrissey publicly declared that Michael Proctor had no ties to the Alberts and McCabe's, was he trying to sway the jury pool? I look at Morrissey's statement and Alan Jackson's argument, and I can't help but wonder, did Karen Reed even have a fair shot on the first day of jury selection? In my opinion, probably not. Morrissey, Lally, and Judge Canoni seemed dead set on a guilty verdict and likely thought they had it in the bag. But, surprise surprise, things didn't go as planned, and we ended up with a mistrial. It's almost like when they realized their cover-up was being exposed, they tried to spin it to the media. In my opinion, that's exactly what Morrissey's statement was nothing but a media spin. Currently, there are troopers and some of their superiors being investigated, but nothing is going to change if the FBI doesn't start going after the big fish. Lally, Morrissey, and Judge Canoni should be investigated. How this trial even moved forward with so many lies and deceit from the Commonwealth is shocking. How the judge allowed all these inconsistencies and still proceeded with the trial is beyond me. But what if she is part of the cover-up? At this point, that's the only explanation I can come up with for why she allowed not just this evidence, but all the evidence, even the basic collection of evidence, to be so poorly handled. One thing is for sure, the Karen Reed trial has not just exposed bad and corrupt cops, but it has made a fool out of the Commonwealth and this judge. I'd would like to hear from you. Do you think Morrissey's public announcement was made with the intention of influencing the potential jury pool? And second, if that was his intention, do you think he succeeded? This brings us to the end of today's video. Thanks for watching, take care, and stay safe.